The Dow looking now to extend its 13-day winning streak, the longest since 1987. And back then, a gallon of gas cost 90 cents. A gallon of milk cost $2.28. The median home price was $104,000, and the top-grossing movie was uh, one of Andrew's favorites, Beverly Hills Cop 2. You like Beverly Hills Cop 1. I right? think 1 was my, my favorite, possibly one of my favorite movies of all time. I know. Time. You have said that. You have said that. And, and for more on the markets, Longest winning streak in decades and the Fed's latest rate hike. Let's bring in Jeremy Siegel, professor of finance with the University of Pennsylvania's uh, Wharton School. And, and Jeremy, I, I look forward to speaking with you because I don't think you're ready necessarily to give Jay Powell like a Nobel Prize in economics, but I think you're coming around uh, a little bit. And you, you've been a, a big critic of how tight the Fed was and how loose the, the Fed was. But now are, you're, you're changing a little with maybe the notion that they could have orchestrated something pretty good here, uh, maybe in spite of themselves, but maybe they're orchestrating a soft landing. Yeah, Joe, this, this was the best news conference I heard from Jay Powell in over a year. I mean, he virtually came close to, to saying there's balance risks out there. Not quite, still a little bit more on inflation. But he really acknowledged that there were potential downside risks. He became very da data dependent. He talked about, and which he should be. Um, you know, I know there's a, a couple of, of doves uh, in voting members. Uh, you know, maybe Austin Goolsby, uh, maybe Pat Harker, a few others that said, you know, there is some downside. And he seems to now acknowledge it. Uh, it really was very, very encouraging. And another reason, and, and you're right, that I've shifted a bit of my opinion is I'm looking at forward-looking indicators. The money supply has stopped going down. Uh, commodity prices have stopped going down. Uh, um, housing prices, measured by the case shower index and even the federal indexes, have stopped going down. They've turned around and stabilized. So those very high rates uh, that, that scared me and the market earlier on in the year don't seem to be having as much of a negative effect as I had feared. And that combined with the fact that Powell now is saying, you know, I'm going to look at both sides of the equation, uh, you know, I think is, is very positive for the markets. Pretty amazing, uh, Jeremy. And, and just thinking back on all the conversations we had when you wanted the Fed uh, really to, to not go any further. I mean, there was a pause. There were small increments, not 75 basis points anymore. So there was a pretty sharp, uh, certainly the second derivative slowed. And, and you wanted maybe no more, but yeah. they didn't, they were cognizant of not going too far, doing too much damage. I will tell you one thing that you just nailed, and you've been criticized in the past, Jeremy, for being a, a, a permable. I don't know how anyone can be criticized when the Dow went from 780 <laughs> in 1981 to where it is now. Let's see, should I be a perma bull? Maybe that's a good way to be. But you have been criticized for that, but you nailed the, the October lows. Much, yeah. You said this is a yeah, new bull market, said, we're going higher, it's not going back down to test them, and you've been saying that all along. Yeah, I, I, you know, a absolutely. I mean, I just didn't see anything. That that smacked of a rec uh, of a recession. So an uh, academic uh, outperformed yeah. all of the the highly paid sell side schmoes uh, on Wall Street, basically. Yeah, yeah. Although that's I, not, I, I that's certainly am surprised. At, you know, at the at the upside uh, again, I thought maybe fifteen percent this year. You now we're 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 closer to twenty and going up. Now you know we talked about the fact that the the so called cyclical and value stocks, which now I think have an opening because I think the, the, you know, the, the, the soft landing scenario is definitely more possible than, than I, or if you want to know the truth, even I think even Chairman Powell is surprised <laughs> at, at how little effect there has been on employment so far. The Fed still has to be very alert. It still has to be you know, looking at, at, at all the indicators, and that's what he said he's going to do. We are coming in, and we all know this, coming into an election year. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is going to be, you know, if he lets that unemployment rate go up, if, uh, if, if we, we, we get uh, weakness in the labor market, that's, that's going to have more devastating, devastating effects now than inflation, which is mentioned less and less 
by the public as a problem. So, you know, the politics of the situation is he's got to look at it. It's a dual mandate situation. He's got to look at it. If he responds to any weakness in that by stopping rates and maybe even lowering them, although I'm not assured that we need it now with the turnaround in those sensitive indicators, um, then I think we're in a pretty good place with the markets much better than I had feared last March or even last June. Yeah, I mean, we were stuck in single mandate land for a while, yeah. and, and that was one of your criticisms, and now it seems like he's given some equal weight to the other side. And it's good to hear uh, the, the Fed chairman, they, they would never say we want to cause a recession, but sometimes they, they kind of say we need to raise unemployment to get to where we want to be on inflation. They're not necessarily saying that. What, what a gr perfect Goldilocks scenario, if that, if that, it almost sounds too perfect, Jeremy, but so far so good. 13 straight days, uh, we'll see whether we get 14. Um, good to have looks, you on. Looks that way, at least in the morning. <laughs> it, it, it I does. mean, the market looks looks strong. Uh, I, I I think we're going to get about 14 today.